Hello and a warm welcome to you. I'm Esther Gishuki and this is Agri News. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's take a look at today's stories. China Council for the Promotion of International Trade, Sub-Council of Chemical Industry in collaboration with Egerton University partnered in organizing the 5th Africa Agrochemical Summit and Exhibition, which took place at Lyco Regency Hotel in Nairobi on 5th and 6th of September 2019. The summit's main agenda was promoting agrochemical industry in Africa. The conference and exhibition was a major platform for China China to promote foreign trade and investment and deeper understanding and cooperation between China's chemical industry and foreign counterparts. The event saw more than 30 exhibitors displaying their products and services. Valentine Etienne with more. The number one agrochemical sourcing event in Africa was a major platform that enabled farmers to learn more about the latest products and technologies in agrochemical industry. Considering the increase in population in the recent years, there is a rapid development in pesticide market and a growing demand for pesticides. Our main mission is to promote the international trade in chemical industry between China and the rest of the world. And the main approach of uh, our council is to organize uh, exhibitions, conferences, uh, training programs. Sishek Thivel, the managing director of Sun Bionaturals India Private Limited, displayed some of the products they offer. So we are the leading manufacturer of neem-based product. Neem is a free tree in India, which possesses a lot of pest and insect control properties. So we extract the uh, insecticide, pesticide and also organic fertilizer from the neem. So this is working against 200 type of pest and insects uh, naturally. Instead of directly killing as a chemical pesticide, it works as a repellent and also works as a different other mode as a uh, preventive uh, f for the crops and uh, other uh, household, household items. So this is a wonderful product we bring from India. Yes, um, the neem uh, we usually ma manufacture from uh, the Neem, neem fruit and neem seed. The neem seed is extracted and we derive the chemical, it's called asatractin. Asatractin is a, a biopesticide and also bioinsecticide. It works against the different types of pests, example mites, white fly and other kind of pest control. So that uh, it controls naturally without harm to the uh, beneficials and also plant. So we manufacture uh, we manufacture by the natural method, it's called uh, extraction, cold pressed extraction method. Fall armyworms has been a big menace to most farmers in Kenya. Although there are various ways of dealing with the pest, it still remains a misery to many farmers across. Uh, bigger, one of the bigger agenda for uh, food security and nutrition. Now let me, let me just uh, make a comment uh, on armyworms. <coughs> armyworms are really dealt with by the same uh, chemicals that have normally dealt with them. Eh? These ones which are uh, looking to be resistant uh, in our own farms at Tichaton, uh, they are easily killed eh? depending on the technique of spray. You cannot, uh, we found you cannot do boom spray, you know boom spray? Uh, because uh, most of the, the insects, it actually doesn't work on them. But if, if, if it is unsprayed, where you spray at the top, if you look at them, they eat the maize literally from the, from the top. So there what we do is we spray from the top. Africa being one of the fastest emerging markets on agrochemical and crop protection markets, the event took place in Kenya for the fifth time in a row, considering it is the leading country in agribusiness among East African countries. China has a long-term friendship with African countries, especially the, our president uh, Xi Jinping. He has uh, uh, announced the uh, Belt and Road Initiative. And uh, motivated by that initiative, a lot of uh, projects and a lot of uh, investment has been made 
uh, in Kenya. The conference and exhibition was a major platform for China to promote foreign trade and investments in deeper understanding and cooperation between China's chemical industry and foreign counterparts. Reporting for Farmers TV, I'm Valentine Atieno. Frequent reports of cattle rustling, attacks and killings in Baringo County could be a thing of the past. This is after a project was started a few months ago with the intention of planting about 16,000 acres of grass to provide pasture in East Pokot and Tiati areas. The project is an initiative of an international non-governmental organization, Borders Community PeaceNet Africa, which has since planted over 7,000 acres of grass. And as Shadra Committee reports, it is harvest time for Baringo Grass for Peace. About three months ago, an international and governmental organization, Borders Community Peace Net Africa, embarked on an ambitious project of planting over 7,000 acres of grass in East Pokot and Tiati areas in Baringo County. The project will later be scaled up to 16,000 acres of land. And now the project is right on track. It's time to rip. The grass is ready for harvest. But before that, there is that important activity of harvesting the seeds to plant on the remaining part of the targeted land. And what I'm requesting the president to do is um, to accept the way he has done. Because I have begun the duty of anti rustling And for sure, I have the solution for life, forever. There will be no cut rustling again. I assure the government and assure the communities that I, indeed I have the solution, real solution. Lack of water, drought and shortage of pasture are the main cause of communal conflict in this area. The success of this project is expected to bring about a huge positive change in the community. Chief Executive Officer James Kandagor says the target is to reach about 33 other counties. <laughs> We will revamp the schools around, we will put up uh, uh, boarding schools um, and then empower the girl child and the girl and the boy child. And by doing so, there will be peace, enormous peace in the place. This is a community of Yamuro to Mekubali, to the 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 community of Yamuro even though the project started off on a 7,000 acre piece of land, the target is to cover an entire 16,000 acres of land. A move that is greatly calculated towards tackling cattle rustling that is often pegged on lack of pasture. You've seen the way the, the communities themselves are supportive. They have supported us. You see, they have given out their land, 7,500 acres, to put under pasture in one ward. And we are moving from one ward to, an, to another. That is the way. There is no need. They will surrender the weapons. They will surrender the weapons voluntarily, without using force. Using force, for sure, we will not achieve. Besides planting grass, community members will be required to fence off the land on which the project is being run. <laughs> This will ensure the grass is given more time to grow in addition to controlling the speed of rustlers whenever they strike. The ultimate goal of this project could be observable changes in the culture among community members in this area. Harry Foundation and Hand in Hand Eastern Africa Organization are training various groups on briquette production in Kiambu County. The session has been ongoing since January this year, up to date with the main aim of empowering them economically. The initiative bids for conservation of the environment by reducing cutting down of trees. They make various briquettes from household food remains, sawdust, and animal waste. Valentine Atieno attended the training and found the following reports. Following the charcoal ban by the government, farmers have come up with innovative and affordable core green solutions. One solution is brigades. We visited an organization that is offering training to farmers on how to make brigades. I tried to use electricity. I couldn't afford it. It was too expensive. I tried buying the ordinary charcoal. In fact, it was not as expensive as it is today. I tried it. It was lost. So I, I remembered the training I had had about briquettes and I went back to it. Today I'm talking a success story that I can brood chicks using this uh, briquette. It is more, more, much more warmer because it lasts longer and the intensity is high. 
What I need to do is just to modify, add a bit more soil which is available, and it, the charcoal lasts longer. The briquette will last so much longer. Briquettes can be made using various methods. Each method has a different process. You can burn them and then make the char. The char. When you burn the leaf, before it goes to ash, it becomes black as, and it's called char. That char, you can use it, mix it with the soil, any type of soil in Kenya. You can mix it with water and then you make your briquette. You just compress it, remove, dry the water and then keep it to dry in the hot sun. Lois Waiyaki started using briquette five years ago due to various reasons. Why I prefer using briquette is that number one, personally for health reasons. When I use the ordinary charcoal, I get a bad headache. I think it's because of the carbon monoxide. So I also don't want to use it for the cheeks. So first of all, it's for the hygiene and also the health part of it because I have to go and look at the, you know, take care of the cheeks. I have to go there many times. So to avoid the headache, briquette is bio. You don't need a headache. <laughs> you don't need to get a headache to, when using it. Briquette is long lasting and conserves energy since it reduces cutting down of trees. Okay, like I would give an example of myself. I brewed chicks with it and it lasts for 12 hours. Reporting for Farmers TV, I'm Valentina Tieno. As the government continues to revive the textile industry, cotton farming continues to get a boost as textile industries yawn for more cotton. Residents of Kivingoni in Delani location, Yata sub-county in Machakos County, have ditched maize and beans for cotton, which is considered to be the poor man's cash crop. Here in Maranyigi, we have mahindi, maharagwe, dengu, doroko, and juhu. Kwa muda mrefu sana tumekuwa tuna mvua. Tunapanda tunaenda season moja hakuna chakula, season nyingine hakuna chakula. So watu wamekuwa na ukame huku na tumekuwa tumepata na janga kama disaster ya njaa. The area is the driest part in Machakos County followed by the neighboring Masenga sub-county. The area has in the past depended on relief food but is gradually coming out of those poverty chains and devising new methods of survival by using their skill and embarking on cotton farming. Pamba ni mumea ambao unaitaji mvua kidogo, ambao tukiupanda katika mashamba yetu, tunagarantia kupata mavuno, tunagarantia kupata pesa mifukoni, na tunagarantia kunonesha ile mechanga yetu, sababu huku kwetu kuna very poor soils. The revival of textile industries in the country and the government's gesture in awarding a contract of manufacturing garments for the disciplined forces, especially to the thicker cloth mills textile industry, is a great milestone to the residents. Kwa vile wametueleza tu wataendelea na watakuwa kitunulea pamba, tutasidi na kupanda pamba sana. Kulingana vile hapo zamani tulikuwa tutipanda, tutapanda. Kwa sababu tulikuwa wakati huyo tulikuwa tunapata mapato kutoka kwa pamba. Kwa sababu hiyo pamba ndiyo tunaona hiko nafu kuliko hile chakula tunapanda. Area residents abandoned cotton after middlemen or brokers entered the market and allegedly started exploiting farmers by dictating their own prices, thus killing the morale of the farmers and consequently the whole industry. Up next is a roundup of agricultural stories that have been trending in other parts of the world. Egypt's supply minister said on Sunday the country had enough strategic rice reserves to last until February 15th and there will be no need for imports in the current financial year. Egypt's financial year 2019-2020 ends on June 30th. Ali Mosley told Reuters local rice production was sufficient to last until then and there will be no need for further imports. Once a rice exporter, Egypt reduced its rice cultivation in an effort to conserve Nile River resources as Ethiopia builds a $4 billion dam upstream that Cairo fears could impact its water supply. The move turned it from an exporter to an importer in 2018.
Deforestation in Brazil Amazon rainforest rose from the fourth straight month in August from a year earlier, according to preliminary government data released on Friday, adding to concerns over fires already ravaging over the region. The Brazilian Amazon is facing its worst spate of forest fires since 2010, with the news of destruction of the world's largest rainforest last month prompting global outcry and worries that it could hurt demand for the country. Country's export. Brazil's leading meat export industry group and other agribusiness associations on Friday joined with non governmental organizations to call for an end to the deforestation on public lands, demanding government action amid the fires. And in other stories in China, soybean imports in August jumped 9.7% from the previous month to hit the highest level in nearly one and a half years. Custom data showed on Sunday as some shipments booked earlier cleared customs after a delay. August imports of 9.4 million tons were up from 8.64 million tons in July and also ahead of 9.1 million tons in August last year. According to the data from the general, administration of customs some cargoes from the united states did not get loaded earlier and only cleared in august beijing slapped 25 percent tariffs on the list of u.s products including soybeans in july last year in a response to similar measures by washington effectively curbing shipments of the oil seed from united states china's second largest supplier before the trade war on today's segment of Sauti Amkulima, we focus on challenges facing crop farmers in Meru County. Challenges we have is the um, price, price in the market. Immediately we installed this system. Uh, we were selling uh, the first crop, which was actually very good, and the people were even coming to buy from the greenhouse itself. They were buying at 15 shillings. It was a bit disappointing for us, but since we were trying our technology and we know we are still striving more and more, we, the market uh, has continually improved with the time. So market is a challenge. The price can fluctuate. Sometimes you can get at 70, sometimes you can get at uh, as low as 20 or as 15. But that can dampen our spirit. The climate and boga too, ni wakati boga mekuwa merima mingi na juu atuju. Ata kama tu merima zai atuju kuingi ne kumerima nini na nini. Wakati zimekuta na soko ni tunakuwa samari ya kuza pondi osanga moto ina kuanga. Wakati mingi ne ni kama maji kikatika. Tuse me kama andovu a meharibu huko. Oke kwa kama wiki mbili bila maji. Apo ndio unaanza kuona poka yako inaanza kuadipika. Lakini kwa kama wakati u. Kama kwa hii mulandu wa maji, eh, wale wa, wa, viongozi wetu wanasugulika sana. Wese kungojia mbaka atiishe mikimbili pila hiyo maji. Wanaenda alaka sana kama wakati wetu naanza kuona mboka yetu ya alibiki. Upande wa mchanga mpaka waangalie mchanga yako wa wiko na mnagani. Kwanza kwa sana waangalia techa. Biazo uwe ni itaji mchanga mbao umerima vizuri na techa yake iko loose sababu yazi inahitaji mahali aifinywe na kitu chochote inahitaji mahali iko free kunenepa kwa hivyo mpaka waangalie eh, mchanga yako iko namna gani now let's take a look at how different agricultural commodities are performing in different markets across the country
Mama Boy, aki si biashara si raisi, wacha si tu kaya tu hapa na stress. Ati stress. Si jiko me next week na fungwa kiosk. Hey, Jumina, welcome. Need to save? Weka Weka na KCB M-Pesa. Save money easily on your phone at over 6% interest rate. Go to the M-Pesa menu, loans and savings, select KCB M-Pesa and start saving now. The more you save, the more you can borrow. Weka Weka, KCB M-Pesa. Now, we've been getting quite a lot of feedback on our social media platforms, and we're going to take some time, and we can go through that Facebook uh, feedback together. That is from our Farm Kenya page. Uh, the first one is from Ann Njoki, who says, great platform for exposure to new technologies. Thank you, Ann Njoki, for keeping it tuned to KTN Farmers TV and for sharing your feedback with us. We have Beatrice Chep Kemoi, who says, yes, I highly recommend to everyone that it is a source of our livelihood in Kenya. I also recommend you focus more on dairy goat farming, case study of successful farmers in Kenya. We can learn from our own farmers. Thank you so much, Beatrice, for that feedback. Uh, we have Kirui Kip who says, it has changed my views and perspective, having learned more by following on channel 20 Star Times for real Farming is the backbone of our life. Uh, that is true indeed, Kirui. Thank you for keeping it, KTN Farmers TV. And we also have uh, somebody else who says, keep enlightening us. Keep enlightening us. In fact, I'm informed since I started watching your channel from Andranikol's Kimori. Uh, thank you as well uh, for that feedback. And as we wind up, here now is the weather forecast. And that's all we had for you today on Agri News. Keep the conversation going on our SMS platform and also on our social media platform that is at Farm Kenya. Make sure that when you're sending in your feedback, start with the word Agri News. Tell us your name and which county you're coming from. And we'll read that feedback every single day here on Agri News. I'm Esther Gishuki, and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>